I love you. Let's go home. Don't start, Eric. <laughs> I know this was a personal story for you, but at what point did you decide to sit down and actually write this out? Uh, I was in a relationship for 10 years in New York, and when it was done, I was aware that there was a story to be told, um, that there was a first day and there was a last day. And I think the experiences of this film also were really transformative for me um, in the sense that they were an encouragement um, to not live a life full of secrets, which was something that I feel, um, as a gay man specifically, um, I, I was encouraged to do in my life. And so everything changed at the end of this relationship, and thus the result, in a way, is the film. Do you feel that's affected, you know, your your filmmaking style? Definitely. I mean, I, I, I feel that this is my, um, my, my most open film, and I think in that way it's my most accessible. I wanted to, to not keep out um, the mess of life. And in some ways as a director you can be so controlling that you try to corner everything and every response. So I think there was a certain freedom to the performances and, and to the environment on set that, that created a different kind of texture. What was Tour like as an actor to sort of work with? I, Tour's, I mean, he's a lovely actor, first of all. and. Uh, like Ira, he's very open and very humble and, and very accessible. And um, I found it really easy to just let myself be, be free with him. We also started off on a really aggressive foot. I mean, the first scene that we shot was us meeting and having sex. So by the end of the first half a day of shooting, the intimacy was, was there, uh, whether we wanted it to be or not. And uh, we were able to let go of, of all the other, the other fears that we, that we shared. <laughs> well, that is one of the first scenes in the film. And I'm just curious, were you nervous about that? And how, did you cut, like, did you kick people out, like close it a little bit? We were pretty comfortable uh, having the crew around. They were a wonderful group of people that Ira assembled, so they were very respectful. And after a while, we didn't mind having them there. What we noticed the first night, though, was we were in a hot apartment in Brooklyn when he had the windows open. So it wasn't so much that I felt that <laughs> I felt the shame of having them in the room seeing me naked. It was more the shame of them sitting out on the street listening to us groan and moan for <laughs> an hour. <laughs> you know, one of the, the interesting things about especially your character is he is an addict. How did you like figure out what someone would be like suffering from that? Well, as far as like the technical side of it and the actual smoking of the crack, we brought in somebody who was able to help us find a good substitute and, and show us how we would smoke it and, and talk us through what the behavior would be. And I just asked him a lot of questions. You don't mention 9-11 once in right. the entire film, right. even though that takes place during the relationship. And I was wondering, what was the decision behind that? You know, it was an event that the country went through and we all went through, but my job isn't reporting. It's trying to to um, talk about the narrative trajectory of the emotions between these two characters. And from my experience, that was not one of the key moments. You do seem to age over, over 10 years, and you certainly are nowhere near the age that uh, I'm guessing that um, you're called. Paul, it's Paul. Paul was at the end. How did you guys sort of do the, the time difference? Well, I think, you know, we had a, a great makeup artist and, and wonderful wardrobe, and that, that always helps. Um, it, it was a challenge because when, when you're coming from a place of being a drug addict and then, you know, you sort of sober up, I, I think a, a refreshing thing happens to you physically. One thing that Zach does incredibly beautifully in this film, and I'm, I'm very moved by it, is, is, is the feeling of a, of a sober Paul, which we meet towards the end of the film. I mean, the film for both characters is a coming-of-age story, um, and I think a coming of, to some extent, a coming-of-middle-age story. And I think um, you feel a different quality to this character, and I think that's out of the performance. What do you hope that people take away from the film or what have you seen from, you know, the screening so far um, that you're happy with in terms of the reaction? Ira, when I first met him and we sat down and had dinner, he shared with me this idea of transparency uh, and sort of a mantra that he lives by and tried to bring into this film. And it's something that I've tried to bring in my life since then. And I, I think it's a really profound idea to just live transparently and share your secrets and not be afraid of what scares you. And so I would hope that, that it, it, it shows that to people in, in some way.
I've always liked to make films that I feel that somehow people will see some part of themselves in the movie. And, and that's in the last, you know, we've only screened the film once here, and it was a couple of days ago. And I've already had numerous conversations about people's marriages and their relationships and their divorces and, and their experiences with drugs and their experiences with recovery and all these things. And, and immediately people want to talk when they see this movie and they want to, and they see something that maybe they, as, as Zach said, they were afraid to talk about. And that, that, that this film, um, if it works for someone, gives, gives them permission to, to, to have those conversations and to not keep the things that are somehow turning them inside out to themselves and, um, and to keep the lights on. 